Hello and welcome to Power GI. In today's video, we'll be learning how to filter a table in Power Query based on a dynamic list. We have this sales orders table that contains customer name, and we want to give our end users the ability to filter this data set by a dynamic list of customers that they can have depending on their needs. It can be one customer, three customers, all customers, or whatever number they want. I already loaded this table to the query editor. The first thing that we need to do is to have the customers listed in a table like this. In this case, I am going to name my table filter list. Then we are going to send this to the query editor by using the from table range option. In the approach number one, we want to have an exact match of the, of the customer name. So we want to filter our data based on the customer values that, are, that our users will put in the filter list table. So the first thing that we need to do is to go to the filter list and then click on convert to list. Once this is done, let's go back to data and do a simple filter for Power Query to create the code that we need to be able to filter. We are going to be using the function list contains for this. So let's copy this function and I'm going to leave this in the description of the video. And as you can see, the filter is, be is being applied here. Customer equals to this name. So we're going to replace everything that is between the parentheses and then paste our function. In this case, pretty much what we are doing is to have Power Query evaluate for each of the lines of our data set for this specific column to see if the value in the row exists in any of the values of our list. So in this case, we need to replace the column name by the name of your column. And then we also need to replace the name of the list the, by the name that you assigned in, your, in the query editor. Once we hit enter, we may get this error. What we need to do to fix it is just go to file and then options and queries, query options, and then click on privacy. Then click on always ignore privacy levels. Click OK and refresh. And now our data set is filtered only by the customers that we had in our list. Since we don't have that much records, it was quite fast. However, this function can affect a lot the performance of your queries. This is because in each line of your table, Power Query is evaluating the list and recalculating it every time. There's a way of making this query faster. This can be done by making this list a sort of a static value in our query. We can do this by uh, going back to a previous step that is before the filtering option. For example, if we go to source or to change type and we click on insert step after, then click insert. What we're going to do is change this name of the step that was added and then just start typing the name of our list. This will make the next step to be in error because automatically Power Query will try to use the custom one recently added step into the next function. But what we need to do to fix it is just type the previous step, which is change type. And once we click enter, it should stop erroring out. I'm going just uh, to rename it to a more friendly name. And now we are going to leverage the list.buffer function from Power Query. So in the new step that we added, we need to make sure to write list.buffer and then grab our list inside two parentheses. And then if I go again to filter rows, instead of using the original filter list name, I'm going to replace it by the step in Power Query. I'm going to hit enter. Now, if we close and load, you will see this is going to be really fast compared to how we were doing it before. So this, this was the first way of filtering based on a list. There is a, a low code solution for this as well. However, this will require our list of values not to be a list, but a table. So I'm going to duplicate this and remove the step that converts our table 
into list and I'm going to rename it, rename this to filter table and now I'm going uh, to also duplicate data and remove filter rows and list query. The second approach is actually using this merge queries option. So for this, I'm going to click here. And then in the second one, we need to have the table that we want to filter by. We are going to select our filter column and then the column that we want to filter in the main data. We need to select which join kind we will need to use to be able to filter correctly. In this case, what we need to do is to use the inner only matching rows option. Once we do that, we click OK and automatically it's going to remove everything that doesn't match in the customer column with what we have in our list of values. One thing to note is that this approach will add an additional column at the end of your table. So you have to delete it. And now we have our data also filtered by this filter table list of values. However, um, it's important to mention that filtering using the list function can give more flexibility when it comes to the abilities you want to give to your users. Let's suppose that, for example, you have a keyword that will help to identify when your users want all the customers on, or when they want to filter on a specific value. For example, let's close and load what we have done. And if we go back to filter, if they write the word all in the filter list, that means that the final result will not be filtered by any customer. If we go back to the, to the approach one that we just reviewed, we can add here some code that will help Power Query to know that when it sees the word all, then it doesn't need to apply any filter. For that, we need to write a conditional filter. For example, if list query and then we know that the old word will always be in the first row of our list. In that case, we need to uh, put in between curly brackets a zero that will indicate the first row of our list of values. If that is equal to all, then bring me everything. That means that every value will be considered a true value. Otherwise, apply this conditional. And now we have applied a conditional filter to be able to see all the values. However, if we go to the other option, it's trying to merge the word all with the customers that, that we have here. There are workarounds that can be applied for, for this part to work. However, I think that the, that the list gives a little more flexibility when you want to, to give more options to your users. And now we are going to see how to filter based on a list, but with a contains logic. In the previous examples, what we have been doing is the, the users have been providing the exact name that we want in our final results. However, there are also ways of filtering if they only know one part of the customer name. So in this case, I know several of the customers have the name Nancy. So I'm going to write Nancy and also Jason. Let's go back again to our data and I'm going to duplicate this query and remove the last two steps. We are going to be leveraging the list accumulate function from Power Query. There's a very nice article uh, that explains how this works. And also uh, Microsoft documentations provide uh, some details as well. There are different ways of using it. However, for this specific example, we are going to be using a similar approach to uh, what the article shows here. The first parameter is the actual list that we want to iterate through. And then we have the starting value. That means that this list will go from zero to five. And then we have uh, what is the accumulator value? In this case, we are using a state and current. Those are keywords that Power Query will under understand. A state refers to the previous value and current refers to the current value that is being evaluated. If we scroll down a little, we see here some examples. For example, in the first iteration, a state is zero and the current is one. And in the next iteration, a state is one and current is two and so on. If you want to read more specific details on this function, I will leave this link in the description of the video. However, let's go back to our example. 
And we have here how this function can be applied to our specific scenario. In this case, we have our list of values, which is the list of keywords that we want to filter our customers by. And then we have our, st our starting values. And then we are applying a filter to see if the column name that we want to evaluate contains any of the words in each iteration, which is Nancy or Jason. And then if this happens, then it's going to return the current value and otherwise it's going to return the previous value. Since in this case, the initial value is always null. If the customer name doesn't contain what we have in the list of values, then it's going to return null. For us to see how this works, I'm going to first add a custom column so we can take a look at the results. And I'm going to paste this and replace list of values by filter list and column name by customer. So as you can see, if it contains the word Nancy or Jason, then it's going to write the word that it contains. Otherwise, it's going to return null. It is returning null because the state value is pretty much the seed, the value from which it starts. If we, for example, change null to an X, you will see how, how it will return Xs instead of null values. So I'm going to change it back to null. So I'm going to go ahead and add a quick filter here just for, for the code to be generated. And we are going to do the same thing that we did previously, remove what is in, in between the parentheses and place our formula there. And what we want is for this to be different from null. And as you can see, now we only have values that contain Nancy or Jason. Uh, if you see that your query can be quite slow, you can apply a similar approach of storing the filter list values inside uh, a step of your query, and that will make it a little faster and with improved performance. That's it for this video. We hope you find it useful. We are Power GI.